Hi everybody, it's Amanda from Queen of Hearts Photography and welcome back to my tutorials. Today I have a watch me edit video and I like to do these videos so you can just see my editing process from start to finish. And today I am working on a photo of my nephew here and I picked this particular photo because it's got some skin problems, it's got some cloning and it just needs some good basic cleanup. So I figured it would be the perfect uh, photo for me to record. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is do the cloning, of course. That's always the first thing that you should do is, is do your cloning before you do any of the actual editing. So we're going to clone out the arm here and whoever this was over here, I think this was my, my other nephew. So we're going to duplicate our image here. Duplicate. There we go. Grab our cloning tool. We want to make sure it's at 100% opacity. Make it a decent sized brush. And then we are going to begin our, oops, see, press our own buttons already. Begin our cloning process. Just go ahead and start cloning. If you need details on how to clone, you can watch my actual cloning video. Oops, so you gotta be careful because, get back, oh, now we gotta start all over again. Okay. Gotta be careful so you don't hit any edges. Anything like that. Stop there. Come back, get the edges here. And there we go. That's pretty good. It doesn't even really look cloned other than maybe right here and right there. So let's see. Just take that out. And maybe take this out over here. That looks a lot better. Okay, so now we're going to come over here and work around this side. And this side is going to be a little bit harder because we really only have one pattern here to work with. So we're going to have to do a lot of touch-ups. So my first goal, though, is to actually get rid of the face before we worry about making it look perfect. So let's get rid of all of this. And... Now we're going to, I know that there's still some down here, but I'm going to come back down here anyway because I want to get rid of this duplicating down here. We don't want it to look cloned. So just grab random spots until it doesn't look so cloned anymore. It's right here though. Let's try it this way. There we go. That looks a little better, huh? Okay, we got to get rid of all this over here. You can kind of just grab random spots. Probably you want to make sure that they're the same exposure. So I'm going to come over here, use this over here to kind of clean this up. I'm trying to keep away from that edge over there. See, I hit the edge. It's exactly what I didn't want to do. All right. Oh, we're just hitting all kinds of edges. Okay. Let's try. You just got to keep playing with it until it all blends in might take a while but you'll get it you will <sighs> maybe this was the complicated side <laughs> all right um i don't know why but i'm just not liking it just i think the best thing to do is create a layer mask if you mess up on a cloning spot that say you didn't want clone let me grab my pointer here like right here this branch is kind of been over right here and I don't want that so I'm just going to put a layer mask on here and just like any other any other mask that you would use you can go right on in and erase that off now that looks better okay and I think the same is going to go for maybe down oh. we don't want to uncover the hand that looks okay I think that looks better what do you think that looks better right before and after. I think that maybe I think it looks okay. I think I'm just going to be satisfied and leave it be. You really have to work sometimes to get stuff to blend in correctly. It can be real tedious. This might look better. There we go. There we go. Stay away from the arm. And did we get the arm there? A little bit. There we go. That looks much better. Okay, now I'm satisfied. Perfect. Okay, so let's go in and merge that. 
our cloning is done. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and run a good basic cleanup action. And for this, I'm going to use my basic primer. We are going to be using the actions from the Back to Basics set here. Run my basic primer. The difference between the basic and the HD is the basic is just like it sounds. It's just basic cleanup. The HD is going to be more rich. The important thing to remember about these primers is that the lightened and darkened layers are turned off by default. So if you need a photo that needs to be lightened or darkened, you're going to have to go in and manually turn it on. So I'm going to show you how I do that. You open up the action. We're going to do some adjustments here. Now a lot of people just run actions and they think, oh, the photo's done. But no, most photos, 99% of photos need to be touched up manually through the action. They have The actions have to be adjusted according to whatever photo you're using. So we're going to go in here, turn on the lighten layer, and then we're going to also go in here and I'm going to turn off the second richness layer because I don't want it that rich. I'm also going to turn off the second color layer because we don't need too much color. It's already pretty vibrant. I'm going to go in here to my center fill light and I'm going to bring it up probably to about 70%. So that's the before and that's the after. I'm going to go ahead and merge that because I've noticed something that's going to drive me crazy. So let's merge those. Just hit OK. I noticed that we've got a little spot down here and a cloning error. So real quick, I'm going to grab my cloning tool over here. Make it a little bit smaller. This cloning just seems to never end on this photo, huh? And just clean this up right here like this. There we go. Get the spot right there. All right. Okay. That's done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is do the background real quick. I want to go ahead and add a really nice, it's already very creamy back here, but I want to run my oil painting brush because it's my favorite action of all time. I use it on like 99.9% .9 of all of my photos because it really just brings out that creaminess. If you have already a very pretty creamy background, this is just going to enhance it. It really adds a dreamy effect to it. In this photo, it's not going to add too much of a dreamy effect because there's not really much going on in the background but grass. There's no like lights or anything poking through so it's not really going to add too much of a dreamy effect but it's really going to help just smooth it all out. So I'm going to make sure I have my white brush here and paint it on. I just haven't been feeling that great today so I'm sorry if I sound like I'm not very enthused. I really am. <laughs> Editing, playing in Photoshop, and that's what I do when I don't feel good anyway, so <laughs> I really wanted to get this video done for you guys before I forgot all about this photo. I thought it was just a perfect photo to use for an example, so I really wanted to get it done, but I'm just not, my heart's just not acting right today, and if you follow me, then you know I had a heart operation back in February, and it's just been chaos. It's just, we don't know what's going on, but today for some reason I'm just not feeling that great. So I'm sorry if I don't sound like bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. But back on subject. I just want to make sure I get everything. If you look over here on your mask, I know I tell you guys this in every video. If you've seen my past videos, then you know. But the white part is where the action is, so all the black is where the action is not. So. I want to make sure you get all those little spots covered up. Okay, the important thing about this action is that there are actually two parts. There's the painting effect, which is the actual blurring, the smoothing out, and then there's the little extra glow effect, which is what darkens the photo. It adds a little depth through to it. Now, this doesn't work in all photos. The depth can, if you already have like a dark background, this glow is going to really enhance it and it's not going to look that great. I've had to turn it off on several photos before, but for this image it works. But I want you to know that if you've ever used this oil painting action and you thought, wow, it makes my dark brown, my, my dark brown, my background dark, there is a way that you can turn that off without actually having to change any of the um, painting effect in the background. You just have to turn off the glow layer. But for this image, I like it. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to flatten it. And now we are going to go in and work on this skin. I'm trying not to make this video too long for you guys, so I'm trying to be a little bit fast here. First thing we're going to do is, you know what, I'm going to smooth out the skin first. Smoothing the skin, I smooth out the skin first, I'm going to run my airbrush action here. You see this all by hand until I invented this action, and it's like saved my life and so much time. But anyway, 
smoothing out the skin first is really going to help with a lot of those little imperfections so it's going to cut down on the actual time that you have to spend hand editing so I always just airbrush the skin first and get it out of the way if you watch my previous videos you know that I go in airbrushing at full opacity and it looks a little intense in the beginning but I go back and I will adjust it but I like to be able to see where I have already brushed so I know that I've got everything and I'm not missing any spots so I want to make sure I get his arms and everything like that you want to try to avoid wrinkles or dimples or any natural um, you know little skin thingies <laughs> dimples wrinkles whatever you don't want to take out too much texture in the skin so I'm going to go ahead and get the face Maybe make this just a tad bit smaller so I can get under his nose. Okay. So that's really strong. I'm going to bring it down. I usually keep it at about 70. That's usually about my go-to. 70% seems pretty good. So I'm going to go and I'm going to merge that. And actually, let me show you before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. And you can see how much it already cleared up that skin. So we're going to go in and we're going to merge this, flatten this. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to duplicate my layer again. So right click, duplicate. You can name it something if you want. I don't. It takes too much time. <laughs> go in here a little bit more. And I'm gonna, first I'm going to grab my healing brush and I'm going to get these spots. All these little spots. So if you have pimples or, you know, freckles or something that you want to remove that's just spots. The healing brush is the perfect tool to use for that. Let me get all these the best we can. And then, oh, I got a hiccup, excuse me. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to try to clean up this blotch right here. This blotch is going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to show you right now how I clone on this skin. It's not exactly how I do it on a background because there's one very important thing that I do different. Grab your cloning tool. And I want to make, I'm going to keep it like a decent size so we can try to get as much um, coverage as possible. But I always lower the opacity of my brush down, usually around 30%, between 30 and 40. Because I don't want it to be intense. I just want to kind of cover that up a little bit more to make it blend in. I don't really want to completely transform it. I just want to make it blend in more. So I'm going to go up here to his cheek, find me a good spot. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start blending. And skin takes a little bit longer to work with than a background. Um, that actually worked pretty good <laughs> the first time. Surprisingly, there's still, there's there's a little bit of, there's like a ring right here. And there's, it's kind of hard to tell when it's so zoomed in. So let's zoom it out and see what it looks like. There's still like a blotch there still stands out pretty profoundly and I don't want it to so go back in and just try to cover it up the best we can that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that actually I'm surprised that it worked so well the first time don't be discouraged if you don't get it that fast when you're editing blotches it usually does take a little bit longer to blend in trust me I've been there <laughs> that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that so there's the before and there's the after and his skin looks so much smoother. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, flatten that. And let's see, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to run the color brush. I want to run it on his overalls. Make sure you've got your white brush. And let's make it just a little bit bigger. Oh, you bigger than that. And paint it on to wherever you want it. I don't want it on my grass because my grass is already pretty colorful and I don't want it to be like neon, you know? So we're not going to touch the grass. Not in this image. Usually I do, but not in this image. I just want those bibs to stand out a little bit more. Just that pretty blue. And still kind of, that's actually kind of strong for me. I think I'm going to save this right here still kind of strong. I think I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. So it's just a slight pop. There's a before and there's the after. So I'm going to flatten that. And let's see. What else do we need to do? We need to, of course, sharpen the image. If you can tell, it's 
you know, it's not very uh, sharp. It's not standing out too well. So we're going to go ahead and sharpen it. Sharpening is the last step that I do. I always use um, a sharpening brush. And the reason I do that is because I like to select where I'm sharpening. I just spent all that time making this beautiful background even more creamier and by making the skin smooth. And if you just sharpen the whole image, you're really going to mess up that nice smooth texture. So I like to go in and just pick what I want sharpened. The eyes, of course, the features on the face, you know, around the nose and the mouth. And then you want to do anything else that is already kind of in focus, like the hair and the edges. You kind of want to get the edges a little bit. The overall is down here, pretty in focus, so we want to sharpen those up a little bit. But you want to try to avoid the skin and the background as much as you can. The way you're not messing up all that beautiful smooth texture that you just created. For some reason I feel like the eyes just need to pop a little bit more. Anyway, so that's the before, that's the after. You probably can't tell too well because it's on video. Trust me, it's a pretty huge difference. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to smooth, I'm going to um, flatten this. And there you go. That's a good basic cleanup. And let's see, let's find the before. This is what we started with. And this is what we're ending with. And as you can see, the skin looks completely different. The whole image is completely different. And this is how I do a lot of my photos from beginning to end. I do a lot of them with a good cleanup before I usually add any creative touches. So I hope that you learned something from this video and that you enjoyed this video. And I, the next time I find a good photo that I edit, I will make sure that I record it and show you some more steps that I do. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and until the next video, bye!